afternoon, everybody. Well done for lasting through to the second to last presentation on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Um, so I just want to tell you a little bit about um, HES Sigma, which Joanne Russell mentioned yesterday in her presentation, for anybody that was here yesterday. Um, so I work for the British Geological Survey, um, and we've got um, a really good working relationship with Historic Environment Scotland. Um, so you've probably seen a version of this slide many, many times during this conference, uh, but Historic Environment Scotland um, has an estate of about 336 sites of Scottish national significance. Most of those sites are built from stone, uh, which is where the links between BGS and uh, HESS kind of come into play. And HESS is responsible for the monitoring and reporting of properties in its care. Um, and a few years ago, um, they came to the decision that they needed to move away from analog data capture into more digital environments. Um, so, um, Hess monuments are split into sort of thirds, which John mentioned yesterday. So you've got your roof buildings, you've got Edinburgh Castle, Stirling Castle, a variety of uh, monuments like that. Then you move into the unroofed buildings, Craig Miller Castle, um, and other sites like that. And then you move on to the um, lumps and bumps, as John called them. Um, so your standing stones and uh, things like that. Um, and there's many different survey types um, that Historic Environment Scotland have. Um, so they do routine maintenance um, surveys, they do works inspections, they do high risk inspections, so if something's happened or they think something's about to happen, then they need to do inspections of it. And they also do full condition inspections. So there's a wide range of inspections, there's also a wide range of monuments that they have to deal with. Um, so they need to have a system that's actually going to be able to deal with all of those. So, HES Sigma, the requirements. Um, a tool to provide a refined survey process for stone built and other sites. Um, so this is what he um, HES came to us with, with the key aims being to enable the collection of consistent um, dictionary constrained data sets uh, that were then going to allow them to facilitate effective planning, um, programs of planning for maintenance and repair. It was also going to hopefully provide them with a means, means of monitoring condition over time. Um, and as part of the system, they wanted to be able to generate indicators of urgency and risk. So they approached us in 2015 um, to ask if we could help them with this. Um, we've got, as I said, a good working relationship. The HES Sigma project manager, who has subsequently now gone to HES, but she did her, a lot of um, she did a research fellowship with HES before joining BGS. Um, so it was linked through her that this project kind of came to BGS. So who are we? We're the national, uh, UK's National Geological Survey. Um, but we've got 16 years experience in digital data capture. Um, and within BGS, we actually have development teams that develop systems for our geologists. Um, so we don't have to contract out, we actually do all this work in-house. Um, so we've actually built our own digital data capture tool um, to meet the requirements of a National Geological Survey. Sorry. <laughs> um, so this means we've got a lot of experience in developing tools. We've also got a lot of experience in helping scientists move from traditional analog data capture into digital data capture, because it's a big change. Um, our geologists are used to going out into the field with a field map and a notebook. That's how they captured their data, and they dealt with it when they got back to the office, um, and they didn't want another system. Um, but we felt that actually moving our geologists into a digital data capture system was actually going to make them more efficient, um, and was going to actually help to improve the data that was coming back into the organisation. Um, and as part of that BGS Sigma system, we actually built a Building Stones module, and that was used by our Building Stones team um, to go out and survey the condition of buildings. So very sort of similar to what HES were kind of now trying to achieve through their system. Um, BGS had done a big survey in Calendar, um, which was looking at stone type and the condition of buildings to, to 
um, provide data to a planning tool that was going to inform maintenance repair schemes within the calendar conservation area. Um, so, BGS Sigma, it's a digital method of capturing what was traditionally captured on paper, and it's a custom-built ArcGIS platform. So it's a toolbar within ArcGIS with a fully relational data model, model sitting behind it, um, and it's based on the principles of spatial data. Um, so that's a critical component of the system which allows visualisation um, and spatial analysis of the data that's coming into the system and then for future use of the data. And it's now the default tool across BGS for field data capture. Um, every time a geologist goes out in the field to do any survey work, they will use BGS Sigma. They use it overseas, they use it in the UK. We train overseas geological surveys on how to use it. And in 2009, we actually released BGS Sigma as a free download on our website. Um, and it's now been released. We've now granted over 4,000 licenses across 80 different countries. Um, so it's in wide scale use. Uh, and this, I think, is what made HESS come to us and think about us as developing a tool for them. So how did we start this process? So the key steps were to define a HESS-specific workflow, um, to go through with them sort of the unique kind of GIS layers they might need within the system. We, we knew we were going to need to modify the BGS Sigma system um, because obviously ours was specific to geological data capture and there was aspects of that that weren't going to be required, but there was also new aspects that we were going to need to build into it. And we also needed to make sure that the data that was captured within the system could be reported out or extracted out in a format that Historic Environment Scotland needed for their reporting to Scottish ministers. So the first thing we needed to do was to assess the existing data capture methodology. Um, so we got a core team of HES staff together and we sat down with them and we asked them, what do you do at the moment? Um, so basically what we discovered was um, as a general rule, a district architect would go out on site, um, perhaps with an old condition survey, um, paper copy, and they might scribble in the margins, they might take new notes, they would come back to the office, they would type all that up into Word, they would get their pictures, they would put their pictures into the document. Uh, then that document could potentially stay on that district architect's computer and never be seen by anybody else. It might go further afield than that, and in the worst case, a PDF might be created of that document and then the original Word document lost and then the PDF magically disappears. And then all of a sudden, where's the condition survey for Monument X that somebody really needs to, to look at? Um, so there was a bit of a lack of data management and data preservation that was going on as well. Um, and that was very similar to how BGS was in the days of analog data capture. So in the same way that BGS needed to move from its old traditional methods into new methods, HES needed to move in a very similar way to become a more digital organisation. So once we'd understood how, we, how they collected their data at the moment, we went about the process of designing an overarching workflow for them. Um, so the key starting point of this was their data preparation. Before you go in the field, what data do you need in the field with you? So that could be previous survey data, so maybe even just uh, a digital document of reports or anything that they might have relating to that monument. CAD drawings, so they'll have CAD drawings of all their sites, so we can pull that into a GIS so that they've got reference points when they're out on site. Um, ordnance survey data, um, images, if you've got old images of a monument, that might actually help you when you're out on site to see what's changed. So once we've done our data preparation, then use our HES Sigma tools out on site to do our primary data capture, create our monument observation points, uh, maybe take photographs, make sketches, record comments. And then back in the office, we've got data delivery, so tools for data delivery, and then ultimately corporate data storage. That's grayed out at the moment because HES at present don't have a big corporate centralized database that the data can go into but it's a work in progress. With the aim of that corporate data store being that it can hold their legacy data, it can hold their new data, and it can also then hold their interpreted data. 
So if they want to actually go and look at information for Edinburgh Castle, it's all in one place and it's all easily accessible. So then to down to refine down that workflow slightly, um, the, doc, the, the diagram on the right of that um, is a very, very simplified data model that sits behind HES Sigma. So it's based on a location. Um, so every piece of information is linked to a location. Um, it's a redesigned <coughs> version of the BGS um, data model uh, with some additions to it specifically to do with monument hierarchy dictionaries. So in geology, we go to a location, we all only really need to know the X and Y of that location, and then we add information to it. For a monument, it's a little bit more than that because they wanted to know where, are, where am I specifically within that monument. Um, so I'm at Craig Miller Castle, but where am I in Craig Miller Castle? Um, so within that, we built site hierarchy dictionaries that are defined by the district architect who knows their site. Um, so they will then refine the site and split it up into built objects, so Craig Miller Castle, stable block, um, just built big overarching areas. And then within that, you've got specific areas. So for Craig Miller Castle, you might have the Preston Range. And then refining it even further down to within the Preston Range, I'm in the chamber store or the kitchen. Um, and then at that point, you're recording, you're, you're linking your monument observation not only to X and Y, but to the specific place within the monument. And once you've done that, you can then record as much information about that locality as you want to. Uh, oh, five minutes, I've chatted too much. <laughs> um, so that means you can add lots of condition items, lots of comments, record photos, you can take sketches, you can sketch on a photo. Um, and that means that you can pull together lots of information. We had a case study um, where we went out to Craig Miller Castle um, and we actually got all the users, not just our specific group of people, but all of our users together so that we could actually introduce them to the system. Because the one thing you don't want to do if you're moving people from analog to digital, which is a really big change, is to just force it on them without them feeling they've got any buy-in. Um, so we got all the district architects and we sat down with them, we introduced the concept um, and we actually got them out on site just having a play with the system. And because of that, that allowed us to design the front end or refine the front end um, specific to HESS. Um, so we've got our ArcGIS system with our data sitting behind it. We've got our toolbar, which is effectively the BGS Sigma toolbar. But the changes start to come in with our switchboard. So you click on a locality and up comes the switchboard. You tell the system where you are and then from then on in, you start clicking on the buttons to bring up additional forms, such as the condition survey. So this is where you say, I'm in the chamber store. The element I'm worried about is the floor. What is the problem with the floor? There's some cracked slabs. Um, what's the urgency and risk of that condition item that I've just identified? Um, so that they can then start to use that information to plan uh, the works that are going to be done. Uh, we can also record actions either on site or back in the office so that they can define what needs to be done to that particular item that they've identified. Is there urgent measures that need to be carried out or do we just want to monitor it over time? So the data can be validated, it can be loaded into the database, it can be used for a statewide uh, analysis, monument site um, analysis, but it can also be used to find out if there's several sites within a local area that require a masonry work, why not do them all at the same time, rather than treating each site ind independently. We also then did a lot of work to refine the data outputs that already existed in BGS Sigma so that they were actually specific to HESS, so that they can just effectively do all their data capture on site, come back to the office, hit a button, and it produces their condition survey report. They don't need to do anything else with that report, it just produces it out in Microsoft Word format. They can then add in some extra information to do with their executive summary, um, but all the data is just coming out automatically, so it's, it's a massive time saving for them. We can have map outputs. So when you're trying to demonstrate to senior managers that you need a certain amount of money, 
having a map where it shows you red dots where we've got serious issues on a monument actually can be really effective if you can visualise what's going on then senior managers obviously understand that a bit better than just having a paper report sometimes. So how did we roll it out? So we rolled out for beta testing in May 2016 and the full training programme commenced in June of that year and we did training courses for them. So we did three days, quite a lot of them had never used ArcGIS before, so they needed to understand the basics of ArcGIS. Um, and then we did full day training on HES Sigma, and then we went out on site with them because we found within BGS, actually going out on site with the geologists to help them understand how to use the system worked really well. So we did the same with the district architects for Historic Environment Scotland. Um, and then from that, we rolled out in August, 2016, and then we've still been doing modifications. So as the system's being used, it's being updated. Um, and we just released a new version in September. And that's now being used for condition surveys um, for this financial year. So what are the benefits of digital data capture? Works in all weather. Is it a benefit or not? It's difficult to say. I have had pictures from geologists in a snowstorm. I've had text messages telling me that their T's frozen and Sigma's still working. So <laughs> um, some people might not see it as a benefit, but I think the fact that you don't suddenly get a soggy piece of paper in the middle of a, mon a monument survey and you're three miles from your car <laughs> is actually quite a, quite a significant benefit. There's obligatory data collection, so everybody's ca capturing the same type of data and it's standardised. So they're using drop-down menus where appropriate so that if you want to search on your data, you can. Um, you can symbolise it, and there is an increase in efficiency. So what's next? Um, we're going to move forward to annual and monthly reporting and how do we capture that within the system. Um, the transfer to the central database is something that is ongoing within HES more than with BGS. Um, automating inspection reminders so that works managers know um, when they should be inspecting things. We've talked with them about a mobile app. So within BGS Sigma, we're creating an app as part of our overseas development activity um, so that people that don't have access to ArcGIS, which is quite an expensive bit of software, can actually have an app to capture data in a standardized way. So we're just going into development with that So we, for BGS. So we've spoken to HESS about whether or not that might be something that might work for them for routine maintenance, um, where you don't need full Sigma because all you want to do is record there's a massive pothole in your um, access route and fire that back into the system so it alerts something, somebody that some work needs to be done. So applications outside of Historic Environment Scotland. Um, within BGS we've always felt that there's potential for the system to be used in other um, areas. HES Sigma has proved that to us. The vast majority of people doing field data capture want to capture a location, make some notes, take some pictures, maybe do some sketches. Um, most of that is in BGS Sigma, um, and then we've customised parts of it to work for Historic Environment Scotland. Um, there's potential perhaps for that to be something in archaeology for trench surveys or that kind of thing. I know you, there is so pieces of software out there, uh, but it's just things that we're thinking of now that it's proved to us that we can take what's specific to a geological survey and move it outside of that, that there's potential applications elsewhere. Um, so, just in conclusion, um, HES, Sigma, HES Sigma's worked really well for HES. Um, they've really moved forward. It. Their, geology, their district art, architects have really come on board with it and really see the benefits of how it's going to work for them. Um, and there's definitely potential for more development, um, and that is moving forward. Um, they're now, we're now discussing what we're going to do with the next financial year um, so that we can keep this moving forward and make it even bigger and better for them to do even more work for them. So apologies for overrunning, um, but happy to take questions or uh, happy to have any queries afterwards or by email. <laughs>